recorded live. And welcome. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm your host, Daniel Davis. Joining us here on the program today is a specialist who's going to talk with us about something that I'm not really familiar with, but I'm sure that by the time we're done with the conversation, we're all going to know a lot more about it. With us here on the Beyond 50 radio program today is Dr. Jennifer Daniels of Tree of Life, and she's going to talk with us today about healing uterine fibroids naturally. And I'd like to welcome Dr. Jennifer Daniels to the Beyond 50 radio program today. How are you doing, doctor? Fine, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. You bet. Now, my first question, when we were supposed to connect about two weeks ago, I think it was, was Mm -hmm. what are fibroids? I don't think this is something that I'm familiar with. Is that something something that a lot of people know about? or? Yes, most men are not familiar with it, and almost <laughs> every woman is familiar with it. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why, I mean, with the uterus. I mean. <laughs> there you go. So most guys try to, uh, you know, on a need-to-know basis, if they don't have someone very close to them who suffers from it, then they kind of just turn the other way. But uh, fibroids are round muscle growths that develop when the uterus um, or room collects uh, foreign material. And they're almost always harmless. In other words, they're never um, cancerous, almost never cancerous. Mm-hmm. And they range in size from as small as a little pea to about as large as a melon or even a watermelon. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Mm. That's, that's now, how do these things come about, I guess? Well, um, the regular medical community um, believes that they are um, mysterious and maybe hormones are involved and Maybe they're hereditary, and maybe they go away after menopause. And that's pretty much the full extent of um, standard medical understanding of fibroids. If, however, you look at them from an alternative point of view, then fibroids are caused by a diet that is filled with undigestible material. So material of the body, one, cannot digest, which means, two, it can't use it um, in a nutritional way at all. And so the body takes this material and stores it in the uterus as a fibroid. So that's one piece. The next thing that it's caused is actually the woman's um, subconscious. And the subconscious is the subconscious feeling that she can't get pregnant right now, that she would be a bad mother, or all kinds of negative views um, surrounding becoming pregnant or parenting. Mm -hmm. And so the um, diet provides the waste and the subconscious direction puts it in the uterus. And so those are pretty much the two pieces uh, that, that conspire to create fibroids. Now, this was something that you yourself had experience with directly. Uh, tell us about that. Well, I, uh, like most fibroid sufferers, I had a big family history. I had an aunt with fibroids. Um, you know, I had a sister with fibroids. So I kind of just figured I would always get them. I just didn't really think about it much. And then, you know, one day they popped up. And they were itty-bitty, very small, but they did cause um, heavy bleeding. And so I kind of just limped along or coped with that, thinking that, I don't know, it would go away or something. And then I realized uh, when I tried to have children that I was infertile, I couldn't get pregnant. And so having gone to medical school and being steeped in the whole medical model of things, I said, oh, no problem just have surgery and get them out. And so I did that. I had surgery and got the fibroids removed. I got pregnant, had three children, and boing, the fibroids came back. And they <laughs> came back even bigger. Oh, and no. And the bleeding was even heavier. And I said, just what you said. I said, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, I said, well, you know what? I'm not going to have more surgery. I really, I just don't really feel like I want to do that again. Because, you know, it's abdominal surgery. They cut your abdomen open. Um, the recovery time, you know, can be substantial, like several weeks, and I just didn't want to do that again. Mm-hmm. So here I was with these fibroids. Meanwhile, um, when I became pregnant with my first child, I became a vegetarian and then years later became vegan and started fasting and went down this whole path of alternative healing and, you know, dietary manipulation as a method of healing. And um, along that path, I was, you know, I I worked with a lot of people, a lot of uh, patients, healing a lot of different afflictions. And people started coming to me with fibroids. And I was like, you know what, this is really a tough one. Because, of course, I had them myself, and I really haven't gotten rid of them. 
And what really pushed me to do something about it was uh, one patient called me one night about 8 o'clock, which for me was pretty late. Um, actually, it was her husband who called and said, my wife is bleeding to death. Oh, my gosh, she's blood all over the floor. We're calling the ambulance. And what hospital will you meet us at? I'm like, meet you at the hospital? I'm like, oh, no, this is not in my plan. Uh-oh. <laughs> and so on the spot, I said, you know what? It's got to be some herbs that will stop this bleeding. And so I thought and thought and thought. And this wrecked my brain thought of all the herbal courses I'd taken and books I'd read. That's I know, I know, I know. Cayenne pepper, yes, that's it, that's it. And so I said, look, why don't you do this? Why don't you take a spoonful of cayenne pepper, a spoonful of turmeric, put in some ice water, and have her drink it real quick? Of course, the ambulance will come. If you still need the ambulance, get in the ambulance, go to the XYZ hospital, give me a call, and I'll meet you there. And um, if, you, if the bleeding stopped, then you don't need to go. So um, previously, I had received these phone calls, and invariably I would meet the person at the hospital, I'd call the OBGYN, maybe he would do a DNC or this and that or whatever, and in any case, it always ended with the person being totally distraught, totally upset, blood everywhere, all over the place, me losing sleep, and the person being very unhappy over the next three or four days, because we really don't have good medical intervention for this. So um, in this particular case, what happened was the bleeding stopped uh, in less than a minute. And the wow. ambulance showed up, and they told the ambulance, well, you know, we don't need you. We're okay. <laughs> and so, they charged you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they did or not. Um, but I didn't get a phone call from them that night, so, of course, mm-hmm. I didn't go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. So the next day, I, get, I came into the office, and I was wondering, God, I hope they made out okay. I mean, I, I told them to call me back. And so I, uh, two days later, I got a phone call. Um, actually, I didn't, I didn't get the phone call. The front desk got a phone call. Just the lady made an appointment. And so I pulled a chart, walked in the room. I said, oh, how are you doing? He says, you know, I just had to come in and just pay you because that bleeding went, went away so quickly. I just want to tell you thank you. And that was the whole office visit, and she paid a full office visit for that. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so that was my first uh, bold step into the world of fibroids because I just, I was like, you know what, I just would like to avoid this whole hospital scene, which is just totally gruesome. And not fun for anybody. I mean, not for me, not for the patient. And I don't know about the specialist, but, uh, you know, it really was. Uh, so that, that, that was the start. And so with that, I developed a method of actually stopping fibroid bleeding reliably. So people could now, um, they didn't have to uh, confine themselves to the house when their period came. They didn't have to feel embarrassed. They didn't have to make sure they were black in case their period started. And so... Um, my patients enjoyed an incredible amount of freedom. Now, it says here that uh, that you have about a 95% success rate of shrinking fibroids, uh, right. and, and you do it through a natural process. Now, I right. think what I heard you say earlier in the show was that um, people, when they go to hospitals, the recommended procedure is to have them surgically removed. Is that what I heard now you there's uh, this tr- you know technology is really progressed. There's all okay. kinds of interventions. Now you can have a uh, uterine artery embolization where they put um, foreign uh, material into your uterine artery to block it so the blood can't circulate to it, and that's you know to shrink fibroids. Um, they can do um, laparoscopic thing where they put something in through um, incisions, small incisions in your abdomen, and and suck out the um, the fibroids. There's all kinds, they can give you um, a Lupron, a um, very strong injection that shuts down your whole reproductive hormone axis and and, um, hopefully shrinks fibroids. There's all kinds of interventions, but they all have tremendous side effects. And so there still isn't a good solution for a woman who just wants to get rid of, and most women don't even want to get rid of the fibroids. They want to get rid of the bleeding. They want to get rid of the infertility. Um, some women, they actually have the appearance of being pregnant. They want to get rid of the pregnancy, that, that pregnant look when they're not pregnant. Mm-hmm. So these are the things that people want to, want to um, get rid of. And so the modern methods of managing fibroids are very poor in terms of handling those things. Oh, okay. Now, is this something, how, how many people or women does this actually affect on a, on a regular basis? Fifty uh, percent of American women over the age of 40 uh, wow. fibroids. They say range between 20 to 50, but, you know, pretty close to 50%. So it's, it's a pretty big problem. 
Now, because uh, you're you're involved with the Tree of Life Rejuvenation Center, the uh, you really try to approach uh, healing in a very natural way. Now, when you take a look at something like fibroids, yeah. and when you talked about your story earlier, you said it ran in the family, so you kind of figured you were going to have it, and so you can see how your subconscious kind of plays into this. Does it when it comes to something like this? Absolutely, and that wasn't the, the even the strongest factor. In retrospect, I mean, now that I, you know, got a grip on the whole problem, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's a wonder I didn't get a fibroid at the age of twelve. I had the <laughs> attitude that if I got pregnant, it was going to be the end of the world. If I got pregnant, oh my gosh, I, I would just just drop dead on the spot. I had an incredible, overwhelming fear of pregnancy. So here I was, I, I was in my twenties, I was going to medical school so close to graduating and being a doctor, I just couldn't get pregnant. Just no way, no way, no way. Just, just, it just couldn't happen. I wasn't going to let it happen. And I was just totally um, obsessed with this worry. So obsessed, you know, that I decided, okay, um, I won't be sexually active. I won't do this. I won't do that. And, you know, as if you could get pregnant not being sexually, sexually active, right? That would be the end of it. Why worry? Mm-hmm. I was just constantly, constantly worried, constantly anxious, constantly you know, if I ever got pregnant, how would I support this kid? Um, you know, what about this guy? Would he mess up my life? I mean, all these negative thoughts constantly in my brain surrounding pregnancy. And uh, that is, I think, really what was the last straw. And then in medical school or in any kind of graduate school program, um, you know, you eat maybe more junk food than you might eat if you were properly cooking for yourself. Mm-hmm. And then they have all the cocktail parties for you full of all the crackers and cheese, and that doesn't help either. Um, dairy products, again, it gives you the hormone stimulus that, that you need to create fibroids. So it's that attitude, the attitude that, you know, pregnancy is just is just the absolute worst thing that could happen. And um, that's the hardest thing when you're talking to women with fibroids to explain to them that you have to take an attitude, a neutral attitude towards pregnancy. And any fibroid sufferer, you say that to them, take a neutral attitude towards pregnancy, they'll flip right out. But I can't get pregnant. And they'll just... They'll tell uh-huh. you a thousand reasons why and what a horrible thing it would be. And you have to say, you know what? I'm not denying any of that. However, if just until you get pregnant, <laughs> just take a neutral view and your, let your subconscious know that your uterus is important, that you need this uterus, and it's not a dumping ground for trash. Mm-hmm. that your subconscious needs to put that trash someplace else. Maybe you could sweat a little more. Maybe you could have more back movements. You know, your subconscious has a few ideas. Your subconscious knows that your uterus is a very important piece of anatomy, that you value it, and that you want uh, your subconscious to take just as good care of the uterus as it does any other organ. And that is the, the subconscious message. And then there are relationship issues. Like women, let's say maybe they've had um, a negative relationship with a male in their life. It turns out it doesn't even need to be a romantic relationship. It could be a negative relationship with your father or with your brother. Any negative male relationship um, where there have been, say, hardened feelings, certainly on a woman's side anyway. And so she makes it right. That's it. That's it. No more men. I'm done. <laughs> Forget it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a, a negative uh attitude towards the uterus. The uterus, simply um, put, it's just there to relate to males, to receive the sperm, nurture a baby, and give birth. That's mm-hmm. all it is. That's what it does. And so if, you, if your subconscious has decided that, nope, we're not relating to any men, men are all bad, every last one of them, and uh, it just kind of, from a spiritual level, shuts the uterus down and says, hey, the uterus is not to communicate, not to send out any communications, its function is no longer needed, and then the subconscious says, oh, my gosh, well, we need a place to put extra waste products. Well, why not the uterus? No problem. Wow. It's it's just interesting to think about it that way. So women actually, from what I'm hearing from you, really have a difficult time about pregnancy. Is, is, is that really how it is? Well, you know, you got Roe v. Wade and all this intense emotion about that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, pregnancy is a huge issue with women. It's I a, it's can a see huge that. issue. And so what women need to do is they need to take the emotional content out of it. They need to either say, Okay, um, I have a uterus, this 
truth is valuable. I'm pregnant, life will go on. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean they can. They don't need to go out and have sex. That's not what needs to happen. What needs to happen is just the subconscious just needs to feel the uterus is valued. That's all. And so you just can't keep sending your uterus negative messages. Maybe you've decided to be celibate, and that's fine. Um, maybe you've decided um, that right now is not a good time for relationships, and that's fine. But it's not okay, if you want to get rid of your fibroids, to tell your subconscious, um, you know, several times a day that, you know, this is bad, no male relations, we're not doing this, we're not doing that. Because, again, the message is very clear. Well, we don't need a uterus, do we? We can just put um, waste materials there or, or whatever. Well, it sounds to me like one of the first um, steps to helping women to avoid fibroids in general is change just the way you think about pregnancy and that whole direction, I guess. Well, pregnancy is one thing, but pregnancy and also your male relations. What you need okay. to do is, no matter what your male relations may be or may have been, you need to have the attitude that, okay, this is what it is, whatever happened, happened. However, it doesn't generalize it to every single male in the world. For example, uh, one example that we did at the, at the conference was, my boss hates me because I'm female. Or I didn't get promoted because I was female. And, of course, you have a male boss. Well, if you frame it in that way, then you've got a problem that can't be solved, right? Because you're not going to stop being female. Mm-hmm. Not only that, but you've told your uterus, you're the reason I'm not getting this promotion. You know, you're the problem. And that is really negative in terms of fibroids growing. Instead, you could say, you know what, this job is not working out for me. In which case, you have the option of switching jobs, right? In which case, it gets your uterus involved, and it doesn't, it's not a slander against your gender. And so, you know, people need to just, you know, Problems do exist in life, but you need to just reframe them so that your uterus is not at fault. Mm-hmm. And another piece of the puzzle is this whole women's lib movement. Like, I'm I'm 52 years old, and so I came up when um, this whole women's lib thing came along, which I think, in retrospect, may not have been all the benefit we thought it was, because what it said was women need to be more like men. Women are bad. Women are weak. You need to be more male-like. Mm-hmm. And that's a very negative gender message that you want to be more like a man instead of saying I'm a woman and being a woman is a great thing and I'm happy to be a woman. Mm-hmm. So it's um, all those things you have to kind of tease apart and unravel. And, you know, the seminar of the Tree of Life would actually go through like 20 different um, uterus issues or, or subconscious issues or messages you can be sent to your uterus that make fibroids grow. And it's amazing, the women in the room are like, oh my gosh, oh, that's my issue, oh, that's my issue, oh my gosh, that's it, that's the reason. And people have really um, you know, big aha moments, and and all of a sudden they really, really understand. And once you get a grip on that, um, it makes that uterus, that, that fibroid shrink so much more quickly. Now tell us about some of the women that you've been able to work with and what stage or situation they were in and then how you worked with them to work reversed of this and help to change their lives. Um, well, one lady was uh, in her mid-30s. She had not had any children. She was particularly having children, but she had problems, um, heavy bleeding with her fibroids. And she didn't want to have a hysterectomy, and she was just really um, at the end of her rope. And so um, this lady I worked with actually over the phone, and she was going to make some dietary changes, but not as many as I would have liked. Um, I generally recommend that women just get rid of absolutely all dairy, forget it, and just get rid of all meat until the fibroids are as small as they want them to be, and then they can, if they want maybe a little bit, very little bit, maybe meat once a week or once a month or something. So um, I talked to her on the phone, told her what dietary changes to make. She did the best she could with the dietary changes. And then the next thing we use is pomegranate. And pomegranate um, is very uh, specific and shrinks fibroids 
uh, very quickly. Now, her fibroids were medium size. They were like um, between five and ten centimeters. They were they were not huge. They were like uh, if you were talking fruit sizes, like a plum, uh-huh. bigger than a plum. And um, so hers actually shrank in a period of about four days, and they were to the point where she could not detect them anymore. Hmm. And if you're a fibroid sufferer, you can press your belly and say, "Up, oh, there it is, there it is." <laughs> mm-hmm. Because they um, they just uh, poke right up, um, most fibroids do. And so hers were gone. She was very, very happy. And she did well um, for several weeks. But what she did do, which I don't recommend, is she went back to eating meat heavily. And so her fibroids uh, grew back. So the natural stuff really works, but it only works as long as you do. <laughs> Isn't that true? <laughs> Yeah, it's not like the surgical stuff where, oh, you have your hysterectomy, it's mm-hmm. gone now. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing, too. Uh, many people, um, you know, in, in the medical um, background, you know, I went to medical school, steeped in all the surgery and drug stuff, we, you know, we are taught that, okay, do that hysterectomy, great, no more bleeding, no more fibroids, game over, job done, success. But what happens? All that waste that the fibroid was filtering out of the blood and taking into itself and using to grow, all that waste is now dispersed throughout the body, and this same lady all of a sudden, oops, she's got a gallbladder attack. Oops, she has a stroke. Oops, she has a heart attack. And so this fibroid is actually protecting the body from all these other illnesses and afflictions. And that's why it's so hard to get rid of them, because you get, you get rid of them um, in terms of, let's say, surgery, you take them out, but you haven't changed um, the diet. The body still has the need to dispose of all this indigestible matter, and you haven't changed the subconscious programming, and so the fibroid grows right back. Mm. It just It's so interesting to not know anything about this and then to get uh, an education steeped in fibroids, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, interesting, <laughs> interesting stuff here. Now, uh can these become, let's say, worse into a disease direction, or is this just, uh, you know, what can they morph into, if anything? What they morph into is a major bloodletting operation. Mm-hmm. The amount of blood loss can be so massive that the uh, person needs a transfusion, wow. um, and it can even be life-threatening from the blood loss point of view. So that's one way that it can morph into a more serious matter. Um, the other way is the um, fibroid can become so large that it actually impinges on nearby organs, um, chief of which is the bladder, so it can actually interfere with the lady's ability to urinate. Um, it can also um, impinge on the rectum or the colon, literally crushing the colon so the, the lady can't um, normally evacuate her bowels. So those are those are the um, those are the biggies, and then of course there's always you know you just you have to wear maternity clothes all the time because you look pregnant. Mm-hmm. Wow, so much for a woman to have to deal with these days. Maybe you're right about the feminist movement. <laughs> well, you have to you really have to have a positive view towards your femininity. It's like um, I'm a woman, I'm female. Isn't that wonderful? And it even takes the view that whatever's wrong with your life is not your gender. Mm-hmm. It's got to be something else. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing, uh, Dr. Jennifer Daniels, is here on the program we actually, especially in the last two years, have spent a lot of time uh, 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 doing segments, programs, that have to do a lot with the mind connection to body and spirit. And it's been really amazing when is I've been able to do these segments with these experts and this also includes what you folks do there at the Tree of Life. Obviously, you're kind of along the same lines when you talk about the subconscious. Mm-hmm. Is that I had read somewhere many years ago that most doctors say that 97% of the reason that people are sick and they go to the doctor is stress related. Now, you can see how a lot of that stress becomes related to how you think and how you are in the world. Absolutely, absolutely. However, um, the stress is a big piece of it. The other piece, though, is the the diet. You can't overlook the diet. Agreed. Um, because if you have a diet, the diet itself can create the stress. And in the case of the uterus, the diet creates the stress because now you have all this stuff you have to dispose of. And then because of the subconscious programming, 
the method the body chooses is the fibroid. And so the two kind of work together, the diet and the subconscious programming. So why don't you go ahead, if you can, and give our listeners the website and let us know when your upcoming seminars are. Do you do, like, webinars or teleseminars, anything like that? We're getting started. Actually, we have a um, fibroid group called the Happy Uterus. <laughs> <laughs> the Happy Uterus? <laughs> the Happy Uterus, yes. I like that. <laughs> so we, after the seminar at the Tree of Life, was such a success that people went there so excited, they wanted an ongoing um, kind of teleseminar thing. So now we have ongoing teleseminars every two weeks. Um, called the Happy Uterus, where women can um, kind of they can uh, join and they can log on, and uh, we talk about um, fibroid issues. And so they can um, reach me at um, vitalitycapsules.com and uh, just contact the contact us section, and they'll send me an email, and I'll let them know how to sign up for the group. Very good. I tell you, again, this is an eye-opener for me. I wasn't uh, aware of this being out there. I mean, you don't really hear too much about this in, uh, you know, in regular television shows or even in radio. And so uh, how do you approach something like this? But it sounds like it's, uh, you know, it's out there and at least half the women of the United States can become affected by this. And, and right. the Tree of Life can certainly help them to heal in a very natural way. Absolutely. Go ahead and give your website out one more time. It's vitalitycapsules.com. Vitality Castle? Um, C-A-P-S-U-L-E. Oh, Vitality Capsule. Okay, very good. Capsule. Vital- yeah. Okay, vitalitycapsule.com. Okay, very good. It's, well, doctor- plural. it's plural with an S on it, Vitality Capsules. Oh, Vitality Capsules. I don't know if we'll get it soon enough. I just yes? The happy uterus got me kind of caught up in like it was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just kept picturing this uterus with a smile it. waving at you. Exactly. What's that? Exactly. Once they learned that the tree of life, what was causing their fibroid, they all got together and they actually picked that name for the support group, the happy uterus. Oh, that's so sweet. Well, <laughs> again, Dr. Jennifer Daniels, thank you for joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program. Oh, you're welcome. You bet. Thank you. So there it is. You got the opportunity to heal. If you have fibroids, that's the place to to, to call and and check out. Uh, it's about changing your subconscious, the way you think about who you are, and also especially what you eat. I want to thank all of you for joining us here, listening to the Beyond Fifty Radio program. Be sure to visit us at our website at beyond fifty radio dot com. Also, would like to thank one of the following sponsors for making this program possible, and that is the Tree of Life Rejuvenation Center. 25% of Americans over the age of 60 have type 2 diabetes, a condition many believe to be irreversible. Gabriel Cousins, MD, the founder of the Tree of Life Rejuvenation Center, offers a 21-day reversing diabetes naturally program that is medically supervised. Imagine the freedom of no longer living with the disease. As an example, a 76-year-old man with type 2 diabetes went on the program. By the second day, his blood sugar dropped from 224 to the mid-80s where it has remained. His wife also did the program, and together they switched on to a whole new level of joy, health, and sexual vitality in the relationship. Join the Tree of Life family that is located within a majestic valley in Arizona to experience transformative whole-person wellness. Call today at 520-394-2520 or visit www.treeoflife.nu. I'm Daniel Davis. We want to thank you for tuning in with us today. Uh, be sure to visit us again at our website at beyond50radio.com. That's the number 50 with a 50 and sign up for our free weekly e-newsletter. Thank you for tuning in and remember, live your day past halfway.